Today we are making a hot water bottle cover. I have had the strangest hot water bottle cover on my hot water bottle for years and I don't know why it's taken me until now to make a cover for it. This is a really great project to start on if you're a beginner sewer. Super easy, not too many pattern pieces to worry about and hopefully with the instruction booklet and this video it will be really easy to follow and see how to make it. You can make them in whatever fabric you want. I've made some in this gorgeous, really soft vintage Laura Ashley cotton. And then the other ones are made in this really classic dark blue cotton ticking with my little label on the front. Both of these are available to purchase on my website along with the pattern. I'm on the hunt now for a piece of shirling fabric. I know I have some somewhere in my stash of fabric but I have a feeling I've given it to my mum. Um, so I'm gonna have to go and raid hers because I think a little hot water bottle with like a shilling front would just be super cozy. The back doesn't have any fastenings because I kind of prefer when I have a hot water bottle to just have everything flat. And I never think Velcro is necessary. And to get into it, you can just pull the bottle out at the top and fill it up. The pattern is for a two litre size hot water bottle, just bear that in mind when you're making the pattern. The bottle is very easy to get hold of on Amazon and things like that if you are without one. So yeah, let's get started and I will show you how I make them. I'm going to start by printing out the pattern and you're going to want to make sure it's set to 100% scale and not double sided. This can be printed on an A4 or US letter size printer. Then I went ahead and printed out my instruction booklet. This one doesn't have to be at 100% scale and I print it out double sided. So there we go, now I've got my instruction booklet and my pattern all printed out and ready to go. There's only six pages to this pattern so it's super easy to arrange. You just wanna trim one of the sides on each page and match up the registration marks. I use a glue stick to stick them together and then I will go in with some sellotape. Once the pattern is stuck together then you can go and cut your pattern pieces out and you'll have three pattern pieces in total. Now that we've got our pattern we can cut out the fabric. So you need to cut one of each piece in your outer fabric and then one of each in your lining. Although it depends how thick your front pattern piece is, if I had a piece of shirling or a really thick fabric, I wouldn't bother lining the first piece. But both of the back pieces definitely need lining. You can use whatever fabric you want to line it because it's not really gonna show at all. I chose to use some fleece on the front for some lining, just for a bit of extra insulation. And then I chose just a plain cotton for the back two pieces. So there we go, now we have all the pieces cut out and ready to assemble. So to start off we're going to place the back, top and bottom pieces on top of their lining, good sides facing. Then we're going to stitch along the straight edges of the top and bottom back pieces with a 1.5cm seam allowance. Then we're going to fold out the pattern pieces and iron the seam allowance towards the lining. Understitch close to the seam line on the lining by about 0.1 centimeters. This will hold the lining into place and give us a nice clean fold line. Then take them back over to the ironing board and give them a good press in half. So now we have both back pieces finished and ready to go and eventually the top back piece will sit on top of the bottom back piece like this. Now it's time to work on the front and I'm just going to put my outer fabric on top of its lining piece and I'm going to add my little label onto the front. So if you have a label you want to add, this is a good time to add it. And then we're going to take the back top piece on top of the front with good sides facing and pin that into place before we put the back bottom piece on top, good sides facing down and then go ahead and pin that into place as well. 
Then we're just going to stitch all the way around with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. If you're not a super confident sewer, then sometimes it's worth measuring 1.5 centimeters in with pencil and just stitching your stitch line so that it's a little easier to sew. Now we're going to remove some bulk by trimming away the edges by around one centimeter all the way around. And I'm going to finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch. I would use my overlocker usually but because there's some really tight corners it's actually quite hard to use an overlocker. And then give it a good press while it's inside out and then turn it the right way around really making sure all of those corners are turned out nicely. Then give it one final press and there you have your finished hot water bottle cover. Now you can grab your hot water bottle, pop it inside and you are good to go. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. As I said, such a great project if you're a beginner sewer. Make sure to check out my other craft videos in this little winter series and I will see you all in my next video.